While you're going about your daily life, there's a mathematical equation unfolding that makes multi-million dollar Bitcoin not speculation, but arithmetic inevitability. Consider these numbers. Global M2 money supply sits at $123 trillion, world debt has reached $323 trillion, and Bitcoin has a maximum supply of just 21 million coins with 95% already mined. The April 2024 having cut new issuance to just 450 coins per day, we're witnessing the largest monetary expansion in history colliding with the most inelastic supply curve ever engineered. The math has determined where this ends. The only variable is timing. Bitcoin reaching $1 to $5 million per coin isn't a bull market fantasy. It's the floor when fiat completes its debasement cycle. Bitcoin has a hard cap of 21 million coins that cannot be changed without destroying the protocol itself. And we've already mined 95% of the total supply that will ever exist. Compare that to gold, which grows by 1.7% annually. Central banks hold reserves they can dump, new deposits get discovered, and the above ground stock sits at 216,000 metric tons. But nobody knows the exact amount. Bitcoin is completely different. Every coin is accounted for on a public ledger, and the halving mechanism automatically cuts mining rewards in half every four years. April 2024 dropped rewards from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoin per block, creating just 450 new coins daily. This is absolute supply inelasticity. When demand increases, supply cannot respond. There's no emergency production, no central authority, and the code executes automatically regardless of price, demand, or political pressure. We've mined 19.95 million Bitcoin, leaving only 1.05 million to be mined over the next 116 years. New issuance is already below 1% annually and the 2028 halving drops it to 225 coins daily. Then there's permanent loss. Between three and four million Bitcoin are gone forever from lost private keys. Unlike gold, which gets remelted, lost Bitcoin stays lost. The accessible supply is probably 17 to 18 million coins and shrinking. Institutional accumulation removes even more. BlackRock holds 800,000 Bitcoin. MicroStrategy holds 592,000. Strategic reserves with no intention of selling for decades. When institutions lock supply away, the tradable float evaporates. BlackRock's ETF alone has seen 57 billion in inflows since January 2024, systematically removing supply from the market. Everything is observable. Fixed maximum supply, declining issuance programmed into the protocol, permanent loss continuing yearly, and institutional accumulation accelerating. Global M2 sits at $123 trillion and has increased by $30 trillion since 2020, 30 trillion created in just four years. Total global debt has reached $323 trillion with a debt-to-GDP ratio of 326%, meaning the world owes more than three times its annual output. U.S. federal debt stands at $38 trillion with debt-to-GDP at 125%, spending $1.2 trillion annually just on interest, more than the entire defense budget. Japan hit 230% debt to GDP. The EU is financing 73% of new debt through monetary expansion, and China added $2.2 trillion in 2024. This is accelerating. Debt at this scale cannot be repaid traditionally. When debt to GDP crosses 125%, governments face three options. Default and trigger depression, impose austerity causing political collapse, or inflate the debt away. Throughout history, governments always choose inflation. They print currency, buy their own debt, and let inflation erode obligations. The debt doesn't disappear. It transfers to currency holders through purchasing power laws. The US expanded M2 from 15 trillion in 2019 to 21 trillion by 2021, 6 trillion in two years. The Fed purchased $4 trillion in government securities during COVID by printing money and buying their own debt. That's monetary debasement, by definition. We've got $123 trillion in M2 growing and $323 trillion in debt being serviced, creating mathematical impossibility of repayment. Capital seeks assets that cannot be inflated. 
fixed supply outside government control. Gold served this role with a 25 trillion market cap, but gold has limitations. Supply grows, can be confiscated, is difficult to transport, and higher prices encourage more mining. Bitcoin solves everything. Supply cannot exceed 21 million, you can move a billion across borders instantly, and it's completely inelastic. Higher prices don't create more. If Bitcoin captures just 10% of gold's monetary premium, modest given superior properties, that's 2.5 trillion market cap. Divide by 18 million accessible coins, and you get 139,000 per Bitcoin. We've passed that, and these are conservative floors. In January 2024, the SEC approved spot Bitcoin ETFs, triggering the fastest ETF adoption in financial history. BlackRock's iBit hit 50 billion in 10 months. The next fastest ETF took 2,011 days to reach 100 billion. EBIT is projected to hit that in just 435 days. Total ETF inflows reached 57 billion by October 2025. This isn't retail investors, it's pension funds, endowments, sovereign wealth funds, and corporate treasuries. Harvard holds Bitcoin, Soros positioned his fund, and Abu Dhabi Investment Authority tripled its allocation. These are multi-decade time horizon institutions building strategic reserves. MicroStrategy holds 592,000 Bitcoin, 3% of total supply, with no intention of selling. Institutions now control 1.86 million Bitcoin, while corporate treasuries hold 1.98 million. That's 6.5% of total supply locked away. At peak periods, ETFs were purchasing 10,000 coins daily, while mining produces only 450. Institutional purchases outpaced supply by more than seven times, an imbalance that cannot sustain without massive price movement. When 2,028 halving cuts supply to 225 daily in institutional demand, maintains even half its current rate of 5,000 daily, the ratio becomes 22 to 1. We're watching a one-way valve. Supply cannot increase, issuance declines by half every four years, and institutional accumulation accelerates. Only price adjusts. Goldman projects institutional crypto at 52% of alternatives, and BlackRock recommends 1-2% to allocation against dollar debasement. Mainstream guidance is influencing trillions. Let's walk through the actual mathematics pointing toward multi-million dollar targets. We start with 123 trillion in M2 and 323 trillion in debt, both increasing. When debt to GDP exceeds 125%, debasement accelerates. Gold represents 2.5 trillion of central bank reserves, about 10%. If Bitcoin achieves just 5%, half of gold's allocation, at today's M2, that's 6 trillion market cap. Divide by 18 million accessible coins, 333,000 per Bitcoin. And that assumes M2 stays flat, which won't happen. M2 has grown 6% annually for a decade. At current rates, M2 hits 160 trillion by 2030. 5% reserve allocation means 8 trillion, or 444,000 per coin. These are conservative scenarios. Study the 1970s when the dollar delinked from gold. Inflation surged and gold went from $35 to $850, a 24 times return in nine years as capital fled debasement. Bitcoin's monetary characteristics are superior and digital capital moves exponentially faster. Similar performance from 100,000 gives us 2 million per coin. Global high net worth wealth totals 84 trillion. Just 2% allocated to Bitcoin represents 1.68 trillion demand across 18 million supply, 93,000 per coin. We've passed that. 5% allocation, conservative for a 15-year outperformer, gives 233,000. 10% reaches 467,000. Mark Moss's floor argument suggests 1 to 3 million based on M2 expansion plus Bitcoin, achieving 5 to 10% monetary premium. Not bubble peak, steady state valuation as global reserve. 5 million requires 25% of gold's premium at 160 trillion future M2. But that assumes stable fiat. If major crises accelerate, dollar loses reserve status, euro existential crisis, yen hyperinflates, flight to non-debasable doesn't stop at 25%. 
Consider 50% monetary premium at 200 trillion M2 as fiat loses legitimacy. 100 trillion addressable, 50 trillion divided by 18 million, 2.77 million per coin. 5 million assumes Bitcoin becomes dominant reserve as fiat completes collapse. Requires M2 hitting 250 trillion, Bitcoin capturing 50 to 60% premium, and accessible supply constrained to 16 million through loss. Mathematics determines price. The variables are timing and percentage captured. Let's address the main objections because they deserve consideration. First, Bitcoin has no intrinsic value. But examine gold's intrinsic value. Industrial demand accounts for only 10%. The other 90% is monetary premium and jewelry, meaning people value it because others do, and governments can't easily create more. Bitcoin's value proposition rests on superior monetary properties. Perfect mathematically verified scarcity, infinite divisibility, instant transportability, and complete verifiability through the blockchain. Bitcoin's intrinsic value is the mathematical certainty of supply plus network security, arguably the most tangible monetary property ever created. Second, governments will ban it. They'll try. China banned mining and operations just moved. The network didn't break and hash rate recovered to new highs. Here's the point. Governments ban threats to their power. Every ban attempt validates that Bitcoin works as intended, as a monetary system outside centralized control. The more they ban, the more obvious its necessity. Third, technology risk. Quantum computing breaks cryptography or a catastrophic bug emerges. Bitcoin has operated 16 years without critical failure, despite trillions in incentive to find exploits. Quantum threats are real but time-framed at 10 to 20 years. Bitcoin can upgrade to quantum-resistant algorithms before that becomes actual threat. This is an engineering problem with known solutions. Fourth, maybe this time's different. Governments escape through growth, innovation, or discipline. Historically, no government above 125% debt to GDP escaped through growth alone. Why? Growth requires investment. Investment requires capital, and capital gets consumed servicing debt. The US spends $1.2 trillion annually on interest. Money that cannot fund infrastructure, education, or productivity. Interest costs crowd out growth spending, reducing growth, increasing debt to GDP, increasing interest costs, it's a doom loop. None of these break core math. Unpayable debt plus fixed supply plus institutional adoption equals appreciation. You can debate magnitude and timing, but not fundamental direction. So what does this mean for you? Let me walk through the key principles. First, this isn't speculation in the traditional sense. You're positioning for observable dynamics already in motion. If governments keep inflating debt away, and history says they will, holding non-inflatable assets is defensive strategy, not aggressive bet. Second, scale to your conviction. Uncertain, 1 to 2% of liquid net worth. High conviction, 5 to 10% while maintaining diversification. Third, custody matters. Not your keys, not your coins. Exchanges can freeze, restrict, or confiscate. Self-custody through hardware wallets removes Bitcoin from institutional control. Holding it outside the system, leaving it on exchanges, defeats the purpose. Fourth, time horizon is everything. Bitcoin is volatile over months, but over decades follows monetary expansion. Need liquidity within 12 months? Inappropriate. Positioning for the next decade as systems restructure? Volatility becomes irrelevant. Fifth, central bank digital currencies make this harder once implemented. As governments roll out programmable currencies, moving wealth between systems gets difficult. The window to establish positions outside legacy infrastructure is narrowing. Sixth, this requires conviction. Social pressure to be reasonable will be intense. Colleagues, advisors, family will call this reckless. They operate on old paradigms where bonds were safe and cash stable. That paradigm is breaking. Seventh, Accept the trade-off. Volatility is the price for non-debasable assets. Want stability? Hold government bonds. But understand those bonds, denominate in currency, systematically debased, to inflate away debt. Choose nominal stability or purchasing power preservation. You can't have both. 
We're living through the terminal stage of debt-based fiat colliding with the first perfectly scarce digital asset. The math isn't complicated, unpayable debt, plus unlimited printing, plus fixed supply equals appreciation. I'm not predicting 5 million with certainty. I'm showing the capability exists. Infrastructure is built, debasement is accelerating, adoption is operational, and supply is mathematically constrained. If governments keep choosing inflation and everything suggests they will, capital flows toward preservation. One to five million isn't euphoria. It's the end point when Bitcoin achieves 5 to 25% of global monetary premium during active debasement. Not speculation, arithmetic on observable systems. Within 18 months, major transition infrastructure completes. CBDC pilots go operational, capital controls normalize, and alternatives narrow. Institutional allocations happening now through BlackRock, Fidelity, and Sovereign Funds represent front-running what they see coming. The wealthy positioned already. Not smarter, playing a different game. Not optimizing quarterly returns, but preserving purchasing power across regime changes. They're holding the ruler while you hold what's being measured. This is the same decision point that faced cash holders in the 1970s, Weimar citizens and every debasing currency holder in history. Hold the melting asset pretending stability exists, or position in non-debasable and accept volatility as preservation's price. The math already says where this goes. Only question, will you act before the window closes? Bitcoin is heading to one to five million, not from adoption narratives, but because that's where math takes it when 123 trillion M2 plus 323 trillion. Debt collides with 21 million fixed supply. Not fiction, mathematics. The control mechanisms aren't coming, they're here. Debasement isn't theoretical, it's operational. The supply shock isn't predicted, it's observable. If this showed you why multi-million dollar Bitcoin is arithmetic, not optimism, you have a decision to make. Subscribe to understand the mechanisms determining your wealth position before this transition completes. Every week I break down systems most analysis ignores. See you in the next one.